Your case is Mr. Philip. He is 55 years old. Today, the police caught him wandering the streets. So, they brought him to the hospital and they also contacted his daughter whose name is Miss Lila. Now, Miss Lila is waiting for you for a discussion and you are a SHO of medical department today on call. So your task is to discuss her father's condition. Here you have to understand that you got a case of delirium. So before entering the examination room, you should formulate some differential diagnosis for delirium. The list of DD are dementia, substance abuse or withdrawal, metabolic disorders like hypoglycemia, hyponatremia and hypercalcemia, infections like pneumonia, urinary tract infections and sepsis, central nervous system infections such as meningitis and encephalitis, hypoxia due to respiratory failure or cardiac arrest, electrolyte imbalance such as hyponatremia, hypokalemia and hypomagnesemia, medication side effects or interactions, stroke or other cerebrovascular accidents like TIA, traumatic brain injury like extradural or subdural hematoma, brain tumors or other space occupying lesions, liver or kidney failure, dehydration, sleep disruption or sleep deprivation. After formulating this list of differentials, you should enter the room and at first introduce yourself. Hello, I am Dr. XYZ, the SHO of medical department on call today. Nice to meet you. You must be Miss Layla, the daughter of Mr. Philip and the daughter would say yes i am miss Leila, and then you would tell her that i am here to discuss with you regarding your father's condition can you tell me more about his condition at this point miss Leila can give you some history of her father's similar previous episodes if she doesn't give you any important information then ask her when did his symptoms of altered consciousness started exactly? Did it start suddenly or gradually? For how long it continued? Did he have any similar previous episodes? Did the previous episodes resolve completely, spontaneously? Then ask two to three questions to exclude each of the important differential diagnoses. So the first one is dementia. To exclude dementia, you can ask, did he become forgetful recently? Can he do his day-to-day -day tasks spontaneously? And did you notice any behavior change in him? For substance abuse or withdrawal, you can ask, do you know if he takes any illicit medications or is he alcoholic or is he smoker etc then to exclude metabolic disorders you can ask any history of dizziness diminished oral intake recurrent vomiting loose motion any history of increased thirst increased water work frequency constipation stone formation any history of diabetes high blood glucose or low blood glucose level to exclude infections such as pneumonia uti etc you can ask in history of fever rigors burning water work in history of cough flame runny nose noisy chest shortness of breath etc then to exclude central nervous system infections such as meningitis and encephalitis you can ask is there any history of headache loss of vision or stiff neck then hypoxia due to respiratory failure or cardiac arrest you have already asked the respiratory questions so here you can ask 
any history of missed heartbeat, any racing or pacing of heart, any chest pain, etc. Then ask about medication, side effects or interaction, is he on any medication, any herbal medication, any over-the-counter medication. To exclude stroke or TIA, you can ask uh, does he have any history of prior stroke or any loss of consciousness, any paralysis or any altered sensation over any parts of the body. To exclude traumatic brain injury, you can directly ask that does he have any head trauma or any history of accident or injury to exclude brain tumors or other space occupying lesions any nausea vomiting loss of consciousness loss of vision to exclude liver or kidney failure you can ask any history of increased yellowness of the eyes or skin is there any history of pain in the tummy any problems with water work then to exclude dehydration, you can ask about his average daily water intake. And finally, sleep deprivation or disruption is also important. You can ask about his sleep hygiene, how many hours he sleeps each day. After excluding the list of differentials, you should do the systemic review. So you have to ask two to three questions for every systems for example for cns you can ask that do you have any headache loss of vision loss of consciousness etc but you already asked about cns during the list of dd exclusion so you don't have to repeat these questions i am just quickly going to tell you which questions to ask per system but if you have already asked this then don't repeat these questions for example for git you can ask any mouth source difficulty of swallowing any tummy pain any problem with bowel motion for pulmonary symptoms you already asked before but you if you haven't then you can ask any history of cough, flame, runny nose, noisy chest, shortness of breath. For genitourinary system you already asked that if he has any burning sensation in water work and any abnormality in water work. For musculoskeletal system you can ask about joint pain, muscle pain, skin rash. For hematology, you can ask any history per orifice or bleeding under the skin. You have already asked about cardiovascular system, but if you haven't, then here you can ask about chest pain, racing or pacing of heart, shortness of breath, leg swelling. And after completing the systemic review, don't forget to take the traveling history, any history of traveling abroad recently medical history, any history of known comorbid conditions like diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, asthma, kidney disease, any surgical history, any history of operation, dental procedures, blood transfusion, tattooing, piercing, needle shearing, any important past medical history, any history of hospitalization before, then family histories obviously important any similar condition or long-standing disease running through his family drug history you have already asked before then take some social history what does he do for living how much his illness could affect his job and usual day-to-day -day activity with whom he is living, who is supporting him at home, is he financially supported, does he drive, etc. After taking all history, you should summarize what you have got so far. So you can tell her that your father was wandering on the street and police officer rescued him and brought him to the hospital today morning and we are observing him since then now he is doing well and i have taken all the history from you and it appears to me that he might have 
transient global amnesia at this point but we would do some tests and include our multidisciplinary team including our nerve doctor infectious disease doctor and many other professionals and we would update you his situation once we have more information miss lila would definitely not know about transient global amnesia so explain it to her transient global amnesia is a temporary episode of memory loss and that can last for several hours during an episode of transient global amnesia a person is unable to form new memories and has difficulty recalling recent events however their long term memory and ability to perform normal tasks are usually intact transient global amnesia is a rare condition that typically affects people who are middle aged or older it usually occurs suddenly and without any warning but it typically resolve on their own within 24 hours dear candidates you have to know that transient global amnesia is diagnosis of exclusion so if he doesn't have any diagnosis from the list of dd that we have formulated then the diagnosis can be transient global amnesia then ask miss leila do you have any concerns she would have many concerns she may ask you is it very dangerous condition will he die or is it stroke or something very sinister you should give her the true answer i appreciate your concerns we need to do full examinations and investigations to confirm our diagnosis so far we think that he might have transient global amnesia and if it is the case then it is not very dangerous the examiners can ask you how do you diagnose a case of transient global amnesia the answer can be like this the diagnosis of tga is primarily based on the patient's history and physical examination i would ask the patient or the witness about the onset and duration of symptoms and any other associated symptoms i would also perform physical examination to rule out any other underlying condition that could be causing the symptoms i already excluded some important differential diagnosis of transient global amnesia diagnostic tests are typically done to rule out other causes of memory loss or neurological deficits these may include blood tests to check for metabolic and infectious causes neuroimaging studies such as ct scan or mri scans of the brain to rule out any structural abnormalities or any stroke eeg to rule out any seizure activity ecg to check for cardiac abnormalities if nothing specific is found after complete history taking physical examination and investigations then this could be a case of transient global amnesia the key features of tga include sudden onset of anterograde amnesia which means difficulty in forming new memories retrograde amnesia which means difficulty in recalling past memories normal neurological examination and resolution of symptoms within 24 hours